Mayweather. And Freddie in trouble as Mayweather pounds away. Believe me, this guy is something special. There is your fighter of the year for 98, Floyd Mayweather Jr. I couldn't believe I was world champion. I dropped on my knees and just gave thanks to God because he made my dream come true. Boxing has always run deep in the Mayweather family bloodline. His uncle, former junior welterweight champion Roger, and his father, one-time welterweight contender Floyd Sr., indoctrinated little Floyd into the family business at an early age. He lived in the gym. He'd been in the gym all his life. So I knew my son was going to be a champ pretty much. Pretty much since he's been born. He's been fighting since he's been born. While his training and upbringing have prepared Floyd for what to expect inside the ring, it's what's happened outside the ring that wouldn't have been predicted. The once rock-solid father-son foundation that brought the fighter to stardom in 1998 soon developed a crack, and the relationship disintegrated just one year later. Me and my dad came to a, an agreement that uh, he was going to move on and train some other fighters, and I said that uh, I was going to move on and work back with my uncle because I feel a lot more comfortable. I want to get it straight before he left. People be telling him, oh, your dad is uh, too strict, your dad too this, your dad too that. Why do you think he got to be pound for pound? Best in the world. Somebody taught him how to do that, and then somebody was me. Uh, beforehand, it was, it was just like I was in like a boot camp. Just <laughs> nothing but boxing, go to the room. Now I feel a lot more comfortable because I get a chance to, even though I'm training, I get a chance to still live my life. When he out the ring, that's his business. When he come in here, then I'm controlling him. I'm controlling him what he do, what he should do, or how he should do, and how he should make this approach, and what makes the fight easier for him. With Uncle Roger now in his corner, the emphasis is no longer on the defensive skills stressed by Floyd Sr. These days, little Floyd has a much more aggressive approach. Mayweather more active than we normally see him, but he's probably out to put on a show. Well, without offense, you can't win the fight. Either I beat the opponent you by unanimous decision, or I slowly break my opponent down and stop him. It ain't about being aggressive right now. He got to fight a smart, defensive fight. You don't win fights being defensive. You win, you win fight by punches landing. Ali was defensive. He still had the second highest knockout ratio in heavyweight history. After an eight-month layoff, Floyd Jr. defeated Emmanuel Burton in his first bout since parting ways with his father. But this fight took a heavy toll on the face of the pretty boy. What would you have liked to see Floyd do? Would you like to see him fight like he fought Gorgio Rogers? Or would you like to see what you just seen? I think what the fans like about little Floyd is how he is now. It was an exciting fight, and that's what the fans and the people want. But the main thing is Floyd Mayweather still won the fight. They finally got a chance to see Pretty Boy bleed profusely from the nose. Tell me out of the 10 or 11 fights he fought, from, uh, fought with his father, where was any blood? Where was any knots? He needed some defense that night. While young Mayweather's strategy may be questioned, he's banking on his new, more entertaining brand of boxing to change his identity in the eyes of fight fans. When I go into this fight, I know I'm going to be feeling good. I'm going to go out there and put on a superb show. And show him that, you know, flamboyant Floyd. And we're nowhere. I'm still flashing. I'm still doing my thing. All right, George, the uh, difference in philosophies could not be more graphically presented. And now trained by Uncle Roger, the offense advocate, Floyd gets ready to face a big puncher in Diego Corrales. Would that be the right style for him to choose tonight? You know, both father and uncle are profound in their teaching. So you can believe they've made an impact on this guy's uh, amateur and professional career. So he's probably a student of both doctrines. And so I think we're going to see it all. But it's all inside of him now. They don't need to talk to him much these and days. And the fact is he's skilled enough to do either. He's got it all because they put it into him. They've done an excellent job. Brilliantly trained young fighter. Uh, meanwhile, Larry Merchant, uh, there's tremendous bad blood between these two guys. And they have publicly expressed it over and over going into the fight. What's the source of all the bad feeling? Floyd Mayweather Jr. is a brilliant young lion who put thorns into his own paws. While he was sorting out all of his problems outside of the ring, fighting only once in a little bit more than a year, Corrales filled that space with some rousing KOs. Mayweather came back, found that his popularity and his prestige had declined, and suddenly he decided that he was no longer going to be the pretty boy Floyd, he was going to be a snarling Floyd. He was going to be 
Eminem rather than uh, Britney. He was going to win with and attract people with controversy. And he admits this openly. So he says he's going to win this fight for all the battered women out there. And Corrales is countered by saying he'll win the fight for all the battered fathers out there. This is as bad as bad blood gets in our blood sport. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Blood is good. Blood is emotion. Blood is a story, a drama. Blood is what we want to see in terms of passion. What we want is a bloody good fight tonight. This is from the man who did a story on cockfighting for HBO's Real Sports. Well, it's hard to imagine any fighter going into his biggest fight with bigger distractions than Diego Corrales, who fights tonight to try to rise to the top of the boxing world. Twelve days from now, goes into court to face charges that he beat up his pregnant wife, and eventually the baby will be born. But here he is. The process of losing weight is pretty strenuous. It's an all-day job. Um, starting off around 7 in the morning, you've got your physical endurance or weight training, depending on what day it is. After having trouble making the 130-pound weight limit in three previous fights, Diego Corrales was prepared to move up to 135. But he left the 130-pound door open for just one fight. Anytime I'm ready and willing, junior lightweight, lightweight, I don't care. After the Manfredi fight, when they brought it up, he just said, I'll fight him 130, 135, wherever, anytime, any place, anywhere. And Mayweather thought that it was to his advantage to take advantage of that and say, okay, I'll fight you at 130. Nutritionist Alex Ariza has been brought into Corrales' camp to help make the transition back to 130. But still, Corrales' body can be less than cooperative. Diego's 6'1", and he's 23 years old. So his body's ready to grow into that. And for this fight, it's becoming a little bit more difficult. So we really have to watch him daily and be real meticulous with his nutrition. It's not that bad. You just you just have to monitor what you're doing. Yeah, it's perfect. Because it's a professional. All guy, all, I think all fighters have to go through this. Unfortunately for Corrales, he's also experiencing another syndrome common to boxers' lives, trouble with the law. On February 1, just two weeks after the Mayweather fight, Corrales is scheduled in court to face charges that he beat up his pregnant wife. Judge me on what you see, not on what you hear, and what you read, only what you see in me. You can't judge me off what you hear and what you read because not everything you read is a fact. With the trial date looming ahead of him, Corrales has focused even more of his energies inside the ring. The ring has been a good place for me because you get a chance to work out through, work through all your frustrations, um, all the things that eat at you. Corrales has shown his focus between the ropes while destroying everyone who has come between him and Mayweather. Are you watching Floyd Mayweather Jr.? I've been waiting for about uh, five years since Floyd came out of the Olympic Games. Um, since then, he's had nothing but bad things to say about me. And I've been waiting for quite a while to get my chance to, to stop all this noise and get it, to shut it all up. Floyd have said things in the past that irritated Diego. He said it'd take Diego five years to be able to hit him. And when Diego got in trouble in Sacramento, he went on to say that some things that he should have said. We're going to see what he's going to do. When he feels the pain and the pressure's on him when he has to rise up off that ground. If making weight was a challenge, waiting for the fight has been even harder. Now the waiting is over. And we bring you back to ringside at the MGM Grand Casino and Hotel. And live in the locker room of Floyd Mayweather Jr. And we've told you about the situation of estrangement and dispute between Floyd and his father. But all is well this afternoon as Floyd Sr. joins Floyd Jr. in Floyd's dressing room along with Floyd Jr.'s young daughter. So a three-generation Mayweather portrait there. All smiles. 
And let's hope that it remains that way between father and son. Meanwhile, Diego Corrales once again had difficulty making 130. He required more than an hour of extra time yesterday to weigh in just a half hour before the commission's deadline for making weight uh, and enters the ring, as you can see, 16 pounds over the level at which he weighed in yesterday afternoon, partially the product, of course, of the half peanut butter sandwich and half turkey club that we saw him eating earlier. Four-inch height advantage for Corrales. One-inch reach advantage. The weigh-in weights were official. Tonight's weights are unofficial. Punch that numbers, Larry. Here's a look at their activity. Corrales, being the aggressor, is a more active fighter. But in jabs, you can see they're about equal. The, the jab is a more important weapon for Mayweather than it is for Corrales. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Floyd Mayweather Jr. Diego Corrales fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Thank you, Harold. And as you watch the fight tonight, you can also log on to HBO.com slash boxing. Vote on who you think was the fighter of the year for the year 2000. Was it, in alphabetical order, Roy Jones, Lennox Lewis, Shane Mosley, or Tito Trinidad? Also vote on fight of the year. Was it Morales Barrera? The war that took place last February here in Las Vegas? Was it Delaware Mosley? Shane Mosley sizzling upset of Oscar in Los Angeles in June. Or was it Trinidad Vargas, December 2, with fireworks from start to finish? Vote now with results to be given at the end of this evening's edition of World Championship Boxing on HBO. And now Diego Corrales makes his entry into the ring at the most tumultuous period of what has already been a life filled with ups and downs. The issue for Corrales, Jim, is whether he can be one of those rare fighters like a Chavez who can walk through any fire to get to his opponent eventually. Because he's going to have a lot of fire to deal with tonight. Indeed, as he said to us, the simple question is, can I find a way to make Floyd stop and fight? If I get him to stop and fight, I think I'm going to beat him. By about a six to five odds, most people think that he won't be able to. But it's getting closer in the late betting. There's the record for Corrales, 33-0-0, with 27 KOs, pound for pound, one of the hardest punchers in the sport. And that's an area in which he has improved over the course of the past year in his championship run, his prominence run, as he came out of obscurity to rise to the top of the 130-pound division, then give up his 130-pound title, headed north to 135, only to reverse himself and come back to this weight level, he says, for this fight and this fight only. Yo, yo. We train in the dirtiest gyms, about to hurt him. Corrales is curtain, straight hair jerking. 10 miles a day running. Performing Floyd Mayweather Jr. has gotten involved in the rap music uh, business like with the help of his manager, right coming, successful rap like entrepreneur James Prince. And uh, the rapper you see here is affiliated with Floyd in his new music venture. You know, sometimes these fighters come in with these hard-edged rapper lyrics. And then, they, and then they fight like the sound of music or Britney Spears. <laughs> the title of Mayweather's record label, Filthy Rich, reminds us, and as we told you at the beginning of the evening, the winner of this bout faces, we are told, the promise of a multi-fight, multi-million dollar contract from HBO. Even the loser is guaranteed at least one more appearance on HBO. So neither fighter stands to lose his place in line as an HBO attraction, but one of them moves to the head of the class. Pretty boy has a pretty smile. 
but his popularity plunged after he was perceived as something of a spoiled brat a couple of years ago. And there are really, it's really a modest crowd here tonight. Perhaps so, 6,500, 7,000 people tops. Uh, so he's going to have to regain the public's approval the hard way. Not with a smile, but in the ring by fighting fights like this and more of them. said to us yesterday, yeah, there's been a lot of talk, there's emotion, there's bad blood, but once we get into the ring, that doesn't mean anything. This is a professional assignment. My assignment is to find him, make him stop and fight. Mayweather said in effect the same thing. Hey, a lot of that controversy was good for selling the fight, said young Floyd. Yeah, well, maybe if you can fight like Ali or the way Tyson used to, it's good. I don't know if you can fight the way he does and make uh, people come in to see you as a controversial figure. But he fought differently in his last outing against Emmanuel Burton. Well, maybe he's planning to come in and be more aggressive tonight. I think his father is there to remind him not to. <laughs> I'm sure his father would like to remind him not to. His father feels strongly about the style that pretty boy Floyd should portray, and it's the one that would keep him pretty. 24 wins, no losses, no draws, 18 KOs. He's been brilliant in title fights, as has his opponent. Now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand Hotel and Casino of Las Vegas, Mr. Bob Arum and his top rank incorporated, along with the undisputed, undefeated king of beer, Budweiser, always proud to be your bud, present the war. Two undefeated champions, two men who are recognized without dispute as the very best in their division, will face each other for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the three judges assigned to ringside scoring this bout on the 10-point must system are Anik Hong Tong Kam, John Keane, and Jerry Roth. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, working for the 167th time in a world title bout, Richard Steele. And now with the thousands in attendance here at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas and the millions watching around the world, Somebody's O must go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the camouflage trunks, and weighing in at an even 130 pounds. His professional record stands at a perfect 33 bouts. 33 victories, including 27 knockouts, and he has captured two world titles. Tonight, he challenges for number three. From Sacramento, California, here is the undefeated former IBF, IBA junior lightweight champion of the world, Diego Chico And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red yeah. corner, wearing black trimmed with white, and also weighing in at an even 130 pounds. He comes to the ring also with a perfect professional record, consisting of 24 bouts, 24 victories, including 18 knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, 
presenting the reigning and defending undefeated WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Pretty Boy Floyd Mayweather. Okay, I spoke to both fighters in the dress room. I'll caution you again. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands, good luck. This is quicker and slicker against bigger and stronger. Corrales has to do some damage in the early rounds if he hopes to be able to get to Mayweather in the later rounds. Mayweather has to try to discourage his relentless aggression in these early rounds. So, George, what do you think? One fighter gains a half dozen pounds since weighing in, and the other one gained 16 pounds. Advantage to the much bigger Corrales, or advantage to the smaller, quicker Mayweather? If you got an advantage in the ring, any one and all are good for you. If you're bigger, that's your advantage. Make sure you take advantage and use your advantages. The smaller fella, fella he's smaller, he better stay small. Move your whole body out of the way. Don't just move your head. Don't move your waist. Move everything. Don't leave anything there for this champion to hit on. Corrales said to us, one thing I know for sure, I'll be giving the first three rounds away. He assumes that he'll lose the first three rounds, but he said during that period of time, I want to be banging on his arms. I want to be hitting him on the top right, of the head. Right, I want to hit right. him on the shoulder. I want to crack him on the elbow. I want to do everything I can to wear him down for the late going. I think if you better try to hit that big body in the head as a bigger target, you, if you can't hit those, you'll not be able to hit his hands, his arms. Corrales adjusting his trunks, and Mayweather took advantage to attack. Corrales looking at Mayweather as if to say, can't you see I'm adjusting my trunks? Corrales is bending down. He's looking down, and it's up to Mayweather to make sure that he throws his shot looping to catch him up like that. There you go. That's one. This is the time when you loop. Morales said, my job is to keep my body low and my hands high. That way I can try to limit the target for Floyd. He said, but I don't delude myself to think that Floyd won't score. He's too quick. He's going to hit me a lot. Mayweather's very smart. He jabs right in the pit of Corrales' stomach. Corrales shouldn't allow him to be hit in the body this early. Morales deflecting Floyd Mayweather's left jab attempt with his gloves. Mayweather resorting to hooks. And right hand leads. And there's the jab again. again to the pit of the stomach, as George pointed out. It's like a syringe. If you're not careful, if the fight goes on, somebody's sucking every juice from your body, especially punchers. And if he moves that jab up to the chest, it's even better. They sparred several years ago as amateurs. On one occasion, Mayweather said, oh, that was easy work. It was like a cakewalk in the park. Corrales said, how could he possibly remember that? I don't care about what I did in sparring yesterday, much less several years ago. That's the one thing punchers have to be very careful of. Don't become overconfident that you don't have to box some yourself. You got that much weight of Cor Corrales has, he is probably 100% stronger than Mayweather. You got to use your strength, though. You can't use it just standing in front of the guy. There were moments for both fighters in round one. Don't get on the rope. Don't get on the rope, because you don't need to be on the rope. All you need to do is keep it in the middle. Yeah, you win. Keep the jab working. You got to keep coming anyway. All right, let, take your time. Let you go run in. I, I, I got everything. Oh so yeah, for Deep breath. Do I know? And when he's looping with the right hand, your left foot. Okay? Working behind your jab, baby. Working behind you. Keep that pressure on you. Okay. He's coming to you. Okay. He got a nick already. He got a nick already. But you gotta keep working. You gotta keep working. Big ones. Come on. 
Big ones. Stay calm. Keep moving your head from side to side. Keep it off center. Make a meet for the side. Just stay there. Right. Go. Miguel Diaz, who was in the corner of every previous Mayweather fight, said that Mayweather has a nick somewhere. I, uh, I don't see it as yet. Miguel Diaz working for Corrales tonight because Corrales offered him a co-trainer job and therefore a 5% share of his purse. He said that Floyd Mayweather would have paid him 2% of his purse if he'd worked there. But he also said that Floyd was a total gentleman about the situation. This is business. When Miguel went to Floyd and explained what was going on, Floyd said, Miguel, you got to go work for Diego under those circumstances. That's where the money is. You see Corrales is trying to load up for one big shot. You got to be careful. Three minutes, not a long time to be, be able to accumulate points. And well, he's only three, 23 punches in the first round. Right. And that doesn't fit the profile he established for us of wanting to be active early and put a little hurt on Mayweather. But he did land the one big right hand toward the end of the round. He's got the power and he can turn it on anytime he wants. Now you know his corner told him to keep moving his head from side to side. He has to move his head down to, to uh, Mayweather's size to move his head from side to side. He need not move his head. Move your jail. There's no way that Mayweather can hit him if he stands up and keeps, and keeps his hands up. But he wants to engage Mayweather. Right. And step as back, he tries back, to please. engage him, he'll get lower and give Floyd more of a chance to get at him. Right on the best, the best point, Mace. And there's the right hand by Mayweather, the right hand lead, partially blocked by Diego Corrales. Second round, similar to the first, in that Floyd is more active, and Corrales, as George pointed out, searching to land the one big shot. Good little poke with the left by Mayweather. He backs away and repeats the action. Just because a guy is smaller than you does not mean he can't hit. Now, all of Mayweather's opponents tend to say afterward, he hits harder than you think he does. Mayweather's very careful to throw his shots and get out of the way. He's not trying to mix it up. Good left hook by Floyd Mayweather. Well set up. Morales reaching and missing with the left. A great setback. It's going to be important for Corrales not to get frustrated as he searches and searches to try to find the elusive Mayweather Jr. You can't try to hit him with one shot. Throw three or four shots and you'll get you a land one. Corrales is trying to get one shot in. Round two has been an excellent round for Floyd Mayweather go on, Jr. Go on. Go on. Are you holding him who down? has established a tempo at which he can score effectively. We haven't seen one left jab from the taller opponent yet. Good round for Mayweather. Corrales searching too hard and too long for the one big power shot. Lloyd Mayweather Sr. was trying to offer some instruction across the top rope in the first round, but Uncle Roger and Floyd Jr. didn't give him any attention. Tell the floor to keep doing what he's doing. By that. Tell the floor to keep doing what he's doing. Now they do pay attention to him. Both Roger and Floyd turning to listen to what Floyd Sr. has to say. Keep the head moving. Don't go back to the rope. Okay. Oh, I'm Keep pulling straight back. Go around the corner when you're jamming. In round two by CompuBox numbers, a wipeout for Mayweather. 18 out of 40 for 45%. Corrales landing only three of 20 punches in the second round. Right, Diego Corrales back, is going to have to step up his activity level and find more ways to get at Floyd Mayweather. Corrales gets close, does not even throw one punch. Trying to land one big one. A guy like Mayweather, you get his confidence going and you're going to have trouble. Mayweather is working it now. As I said in the second round, he's developed the tempo at which he can score. He's moving in and out, side to side, 
taking advantage of his opportunities when they're there, and Corrales can scarcely find the moment to throw a punch. I think you can give away too many rounds Corrales is doing right now. You don't want to give away all of your rounds and then try to, and must have a knockout. Especially when you're in with a boxer. Never That's thought. a good left hook by Corrales. Probably the best punch of both fighters tonight. Corrales manages to stalk Mayweather into the corner. Protect yourself. Richard Steele calls him the puck. Steele told him to protect yourself at all times. That's what you're supposed to do. Corrales is trying to hit him back. Ducking the left jab and missing with the left hook. Turns to look at the big screen as he goes back to the Person middle of the ring. First to get out. First to get out. No holding. Break. Step back. Step back. Corrales again looks up at the big screen. Not sure what he's trying to see up there. Once Mayweather right hand, the left jab, jab, he can do anything he wants. Right now, he hasn't gotten it good yet. He has to re withdraw it real quick and retreat. Good right hand. It was grazing, but it was almost right at Mayweather's head. And it's bothered Diego Corrales' left eye. He put the gloves up to touch the left eye and seems to be blinking for the moment. And incidentally, there's a clock on the big screen. So when Corrales looks at it, he's checking to see how much time is left in the round. Mayweather's on, on his toes. What you gotta do, you can't. Only time you rest is when you sit on that stool. You gotta keep your feet moving at all times. If Mayweather can do this at this rate for 12 rounds, it's gonna be awfully difficult for Diego Corrales to find a way to score. His back is against the rope as his dad told him not to. Now you see what the challenge facing Corrales is. Hard body shot with the right hand. And he said, I have to find a way to make him stop and fight. Mark your calendars for these upcoming shows. January 27, KO Nation features five Olympians making their professional debuts, including silver medalist Ricardo Williams. One week later, Hector Camacho Jr. and Sr. both fight on the same card from a nightclub in South Miami Beach. February 24, Roy Jones defends his light heavyweight crown against Derek Harmon. Next Thursday, don't miss Inside the NFL. Dan Marino and the gang will be in Tampa to dissect the surprising matchup between the Giants and Ravens. And tune in February 14 for the premiere of On the Record with Bob Costas, a sports program unlike any other. Broadcast live each week, this one-hour show will offer commentary, essays, and tough, issue-oriented segments. There will also be interviews with celebrated people from inside and outside the sports world. On the Record with Bob Costas, only on HBO. Well, Corrales said... He, uh, he would have to give away the early rounds, but as you say, George, you can't give away too many of them. He's going to have to get something done here soon, like that. Corrales let him open up with his left jab. This is the first time he was able to land one. He's only thrown 11 jabs in the first three rounds by CompuBox numbers. Harold, how'd you score him? Okay, Jim, 30 to 27, three rounds to nothing in favor of the champion, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Jim, you call this ring generalship. He goes side to side, works that jab up and down, comes over the top with the right hand, fighting a beautiful fight so far, keeping uh, Diego Corrales off balance. Diego just can't get off. Floyd landed all the clean, hard shots. So a shout-out from Mayweather so far. Corrales stalking and stalking. Mayweather moving and boxing. What you do when you're in there with a puncher, you let him throw Punch two or three out. hard shots. Then you get closer and start hitting. But wait, because he has to collect his breathing first. And that's what Mayweather is doing. It's the old okie doke Mayweather landing the right hand. Jabbing twice. Corrales trying to set up and get off. Mayweather Ooh. firing and then moving. Back to the jab, to the body with that jab again, Mayweather does. Now he's going to allow Corrales to throw the big shots, four or five, and then he's going to get right back on him. Well executed fight plan so far for Floyd Mayweather Jr. Right, step back. Corrales may have to simply throw a little more caution to the wind and be more aggressive. Got to use his jab. He's the taller guy, and he hasn't thrown any jab. 
Bobby uses the jab to set up a right and a left. Left hand landed to the body. Mayweather comes back, sticking his own jab and stopping Corrales' momentum. You can see now a combination of defense and offense by Floyd Mayweather. Looks like his dad and his uncle are both made an impression tonight. Absolutely right. He's been brilliant both ways. He can't stop like that. Good left to the body by Corrales. Right hand over the top. Mayweather comes back with an angry right hand of his own over the top. Good left hook to the body by Floyd. Corrales smiles at him, usually a sign that he's been a little shocked. But Mayweather doesn't want to get into these big exchanges with Corrales. He's going to get the best every time. Now he's getting right back on it because he's expelled a lot of energy throwing those big shots. Mayweather can get him now. There you go. Good left hook and a right cross by Mayweather. Another sticking right lands upstairs. You always wait until the puncher throws four or five big shots. He loses his oxygen, and then you get back on him. Corrales going back to the body. If there's one thing Diego Corrales has gotten better at in round four, it is that he got to Mayweather's body a couple of times. But That's Floyd Mayweather is still piling up the points. Match better, okay? Speed over here. Okay. Pick it up. Pick it up a little bit more. Pick it up a little bit more. Okay, let's come on with the jab now. Okay, give me some combinations. Punches and bunches. Okay, you need to stay with your hand. Don't don't pull, don't pull out from the punches like you've been doing. You're getting hit. Stay yeah. with your hands. Yeah. Just, just stay with it. Stay with give it. Me the, give me the right hand that we always talk about this way and that way. Would you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, All right, come on. Let's go. Let's go to work, baby. Never mind apart. So far, this fight resembles the Whitaker Chavez fight, in which the boxer is simply frustrating the banger. Corrales' corner told him to start jabbing now. Use combination. You just can't walk into this guy. He can hit also. Well, in round four by CompuBox numbers, Mayweather outlanded Corrales 22 to 7. Diego's only averaging throwing 22 punches around. And you heard his father slash trainer Ray Woods saying, step it up. You've, you've got to be start building the tempo to a higher level than it's been so far. Brilliantly executed fight plan by Floyd Mayweather and his quickness speed, versatility, big differences in the bout so far. Here's a guy like Mayweather who spent a lot of years in the gym with bigger guys, middleweights, light out. heavyweights. He's not intimidated with this big size. Corrales has got to put the hard power on him, hit him in his chest, bring in the combination, stop trying to throw one shot at a time. When he's able to put his punches together, Corrales' power is explosive. But when a man is as quick and elusive as Floyd Mayweather Jr., it's extremely difficult to hit him with more than one shot at a time. No, now, there's one punch to the body. One no, to the body. Good body shot there. by Corella. That's where the business can be done if he's going to do it. Mayweather goes right back to the body. If you're able to land two or three jabs to the, to the, to the stomach of your opponent, you can easily come back upstairs with a left hook because his body is right hand automatically goes down for protection. Lord Patterson would go down, go down to the body, and then fake like he's going and come back up to the head. Castillo Mato stuff. Corrales missing big twice upstairs. Corrales is starting to pick up the speed a little bit then, because Mayweather's slowing up as far as output. No, holy. Not throwing shots anymore. He's moving his body, but he's not throwing right, punches. Those body shots around the side can accumulate and do some damage. If you're going to tie a guy up, you tie him up completely so he can't even touch you on the side. Hard right hand by Mayweather. Now Mayweather started to hit and move again. 
Morales doesn't seem to be bothered so far by Mayweather's punching power, but if you hit a guy enough times, the punishment builds up. Mayweather hasn't tried to sit down on any shot yet. Everything is hit and moved. And you heard even defensively minded Floyd Sr. saying if you keep this up, you'll be ready to go by the seventh, eighth, and ninth rounds. Whoa! A little spin move. A little swelling around the right eye of Diego Corrales. And a happy night so far for the Mayweather family. Hold your eye for the word. You shut him down, you look real smart. Keep doing this. Tenth round. We'll go, 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 we'll don't worry about what you did over there. We're going to do some more of that. Don't worry about that. Okay. Stay focused on the man. Hey, man, don't put so much water on it. Don't, don't, okay. don't, 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 okay. don't, 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 Shot by Corrales. Those right hands to the body can really pay some dividends if this fight goes beyond 10 rounds. In five rounds in the fight, Chico Corrales still averaging only 25 punches thrown per round. Pretty hard to find the target. Mayweather landing close to half of his shots, working at a measured tempo that works for him. Now Corrales begins to get more active as Mayweather's feet start to move just a little less. Left hook upstairs by Floyd Mayweather. Hunter, get out! So quick on the trigger. This is the this is the Uncle Roger part of Mayweather. Mayweather's also really brave. I wouldn't be that brave in there with a puncher like Corral. Well, he's so quick that he feels he has the advantage outside or inside, and that sometimes he can't stand and deliver, George. Diego being bothered by his right eye. You see him pawing it with the glove from moment to moment. Here when you see a fighter's in good shape, when he takes his feet all around the ring like that, he moves his whole body. Body shot by Corrales. Pro Corrales crowd got excited. Mayweather moved away. Mayweather goes right, right, and then he goes left, left. To the rhythm that throws his opponent out. See the left? Floyd still landing two or three great, where every up, one up. punch landed by Corrales. This is an exciting fight when you see two different kinds of boxers executing perfectly what one ought to do. But the other punch is just not using his left jab. Big left hook to the body by Mayweather. Stuns Corrales. Mayweather keeps his eyes on the whole body of Corrales. Shoulders, head. That's why he's able to just run out of the way. He see it coming. Now Corrales, Corrales thought for a moment that he had him, and boom, just like that, Mayweather was gone. And he steps back in to land three punches and move away again. Remember, it's always after Corrales has thrown some hard shots to take the win out of him himself. And while he's trying to regroup group himself, you jump on him, and that's what Mayweather's doing. Pretty boy Floyd is pretty strong tonight. And he whacks Diego Corrales on the chin with a left hook. And they got to be careful about following a guy who has knockouts on his records also. You got to follow him with punches. Well, Just everybody who faces him says oh. that Mayweather is a deceptive puncher. So I should know. Keep going to the body. You're hitting a good jab and you keep taking with the hook. That's what I'm talking about. 
Throw the lead right hand. Now I want you to frame a little more. Frame a little more. Just drop the right hand to the butt. It's time to go, baby. It's time to go. Mayweather fights in a tradition of boxing and quick handedness that goes back in Michigan all the way to fighters like Sugar Ray Robinson. Well, there's a brilliant start to round seven. The super quickness of Floyd Mayweather produces a knockdown to begin the seventh round. And if Corrales had any thought whatsoever of trying to come back and win a decision, that should put him into that. He's lost the first six rounds. Now he's facing a two-point round in the seventh. Mayweather now stops to recollect himself now. You want to, that's what you want to do with a puncher. He gets back on his feet. He can hurt you. Get your legs back under you, take a deep breath, and do it all over again what you did first. The run is coming in. down and just goes right into the, to the left hook of uh, Mayweather. You knew coming in that Mayweather had a quickness advantage. I'm just not sure how many of us expected it to be this dramatic and this graphic. I mean, this has been a wipeout and a brilliant performance by Floyd. But you wonder if Corrales, in getting back down to 130 pounds... Oh, no. Oh, no. It's been a masterful job here. This has been a job of pure boxing. Pure boxing. So it doesn't matter who no, 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 no. no, I agree with George. As, as much as it is a disadvantage for Corrales to have to come down to 130, it doesn't look the way this fight is going. It would make any difference at 135 or 140. I think I have to agree with that. At any of these weights, Mayweather would be quicker and more skillful. Great! Step Corrales back, step back. still has the power. So we won't count him out yet. No, no. All you got to do is get Mayweather too overconfident, start trying to mix it up with this puncher, and Mayweather can be getting off, off the canvas himself. And he's got to find a way to apply the power if he's going to change the course of the fight, and he hasn't Don't gotten me. anywhere near it. Throwing an average of less than 25 punches per round. I often say it, if you want to be a good fighter, forget about the left jab. If you want to be a great fighter, that's the best punch in boxing. Corrales has not used the jab all night. And the second knockdown of the round for Mayweather. And the accumulated oh. punishment by Corrales oh. has left, or by Man. Mayweather, has left Seven. Corrales woozy hey. on his feet in the seventh round. There is no three knockdown rule. There are 20 seconds left in the round. And there's the third knockdown of the Four, round. Five, six, and you cannot be saved seven, by the bell, but it looks as eight, though Corrales will have a chance come to, me. to at least make it out of the round. Three knockdowns in the seventh round. Junior. Richard Steele did a great oh, job that round. Diego, you want to fight or you don't want to fight? How are you doing, Diego? Are you right? That's the state Marco, commission doctor who asked want Corrales how he was doing and if he wanted to keep fighting. Hey? That's your last round. I don't want to let you come out if you don't throw punches. Right. I'm going to start the fight myself. Right. Me and your daddy, we already decided to start the fight. Oh, you, oh, you fight, or we start the fight. Okay? You got it? You are with us or not? You are with us? Here are the knockdowns, Larry. The first one was right as the, at the bell of the first round. Caught him by surprise. But the later ones... It appeared that Corrales was okay and aware of everything going on, but he's in a position now in this fight where he has to start going from being relentless to being reckless, and against a sharpshooter like Mayweather, that may not be the best way to fight. And it doesn't look like Corrales has a lot of legs left. You heard Diego, or I should say Miguel Diaz, you heard Miguel Diaz saying, we're gonna stop the fight if you don't start throwing some punches. So he throws punches, but takes punches in return. How 
Corwin's got to be careful with that puncher. Corrales, is, if he can't do anything else, he can punch. And here he is coming up. Three knockdowns in the last round, and he's still coming forward. And there's a quick left hook by Corrales that momentarily sends Mayweather back to him. He follows Mayweather around, not doing anything, just walking straight into him without a punch, throwing a punch. You've got to throw a punch. Mayweather with a little smile break, on his break, face. Break. Keep him in it's front, been okay. easy work so far, that's for sure. Corrales has been embarrassed here, and it was on that embarrassment that Miguel Diaz tried to play when he said, your dad and I are going to stop this fight. Every time Mayweather throws his left hook, Corrales drops his right hand. Drops both hands. I've never seen anything like this. You go down, you take your hands with you. And now Corrales gets in the shot, showing his determination. His corner told him, fight or we're going to throw in the towel. So far, this, this counts as a hell of a rally by Corrales coming off that last round. Can't question his courage, that's for sure. Another laser left his hand. Throws it, throws yeah, it throws throws right hand. Throws throws his hand. Throws his hand. Never seen anything like it. You drop your head, keep your hands up. adjusting his front, his hands down on his legs. Mayweather elected not to fire at that moment. Larry, how good is he, Mayweather? Well, he seems to be almost, you know, a nine-second sprinter fighting against ten-second sprinters in all of his fights. He just has a, a side, quite a side from his skill level, it's his quickness level that puts him into a different dimension. The most optimistic comparisons are between Mayweather Jr. and Ray Leonard because of the combination and speed and, of speed and power. His detractors compare him more to Brunel Whitaker. Same As a left jab. Now, he's knocking his head back with a left jab, and he's the shorter opponent. You know, in a fight that this has been compared to Leonard and Hearns, at this point in the fight, Hearns started to box and use his reach. Corrales either can't or Match won't ready. do that. Match ready to this round. Match ready to this round. You see, you can do it. You can do it if you, you want it. You can do it if you want it. He probably was going to that round. But if you follow, 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 if you don't do nothing, it's very hard for you. You got to throw your punches, Chico. Okay? Take a deep breath. Your hands out and double up on your hook. Okay. All right. Sometimes throw your, throw your right hand. Let me show you. Throw, you show the right hand to the hook. Okay. You fighting real smart. Thank you, man. My partner. You just all you do is just to keep your eyes focused. Okay. Okay. Keep going to the body. Man. Off the jab. Don't do nothing without the jab. Okay. Okay. Let's fight. Let's fight. Off the jab. Corrales is achieving an embarrassing CompuBox distinction. According to CompuBox numbers, he's landed in single digits in all eight rounds. He'll set a record at this rate. Reggie Johnson against Roy Jones right, right, landed in single digits in seven of 12 rounds. Holyfield versus Lennox Lewis in their first fight did so in six of 12 rounds. Harold, how do you have it through eight? Okay, Jim, 80 to 70. Uh, eight rounds to nothing, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Jim, I gotta tell you, I'm terribly impressed. I don't think I've seen an exhibition of boxing like this since Willie Papp. This kid is unbelievable. Great legs, great speed, unbelievable ring generalship. I mean, he's got tremendous presence in that ring. Floyd Mayweather knows where he is every minute of this fight, and he's murdering Diego Corrales with those jibs and overhand rights. And by the way, Jim, the, the three knockdown uh, round, I went 10-7. Most judges will not go below 10-7 because it puts the other guy too far out of the fight. So you don't rock them again with that left hook. Yep. Well, I mean, oh, Larry, the Merchant has, Larry Merchant has seen more championship great fighters than anyone at this table. And for him to say Willie Pelt, what do you think? Well, oh, well he's I, been a judge too. Don't get me wrong. You know, I can't. I, you know, it's it's difficult to make comparisons because you have to talk over over a long career. We're seeing him as a young man. And right now, he just has otherworldly quickness. And the difference between athletes 
is usually in their degree of quickness and speed. Well, this is almost like a Tiger Woods kind of performance against the field. This is a guy who knows what he's talking about. He's seen them. You can't get lazy. Mayweather better beware. Let him lose around, George. Stop being so nervous about him. <laughs> but he loses around. He can lose the fight with this powerful guy. Oh, but that left jab rocked his head back. He could lose the last four rounds on two-point rounds, and he'd still win the fight by Harold's scorecard. So I think he's pretty well in control of this. Here's a guy that's been knocked down more than once. He continuously follows this guy around the ring. And after throwing enough punches to satisfy Miguel Diaz and Ray Woods in the eighth round, Corrales goes back in the ninth round to walking around and looking at Mayweather. Hasn't can't, been able to get off. Can't seem to zero in and get his antenna set. That was what Mayweather doesn't want to do. You want to keep your feet moving, not your shoulders. Good body shot by Corella. Ten seconds to go in the ninth. Nine minutes left in the fight after this. Time running out on Diego Corrales as he desperately tries to find come on, come on, come on. something that will work against the super brilliant Floyd Mayweather Jr. You see when you're using the jab? When you're using the jab first, it's much easier for you. Okay, baby. Jab, jab, right hand, let go. And jab again, and jab. Okay? The streak continues for Corrales. Single digits landed in every one of the nine rounds. I know we do. We need to stop you. We need to stop you. So move your hands. Right. Move your eyes. You don't like it downstairs. Keep going downstairs. And after throwing only 25 punches in the ninth round, you heard Corrales say to his corner, I'm giving you guys everything I've got. That's frustration. So Floyd Mayweather has, in all likelihood, won every round. Most rounds he's dominated. He knocked Diego Corrales down three times in the seventh round. His most important punch for Mayweather has been that left jab right in the pit of the stomach. Makes his taller opponent bend down more and more to his level. The odds were close. Ringside experts were probably pretty close to evenly divided as to who is going to win the fight. And Mayweather's just walking away with it don't as he push. pushes Diego down. And Richard Steele says, don't push. Mayweather has the tendency occasionally to use his elbows, you know. Richard Steele caught on to it instantly. Said, no, 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 no form. Quick left hook and a walk away by Mayweather as Corrales tried to close in. You can't, you gotta throw punches if you're gonna walk forward. Just throw, just let the jab just fly out. Even if you miss him, just throw it. Another little left hook. Didn't even seem like that big a punch. Corrales' oh. legs are just shot Five. from the multiple punches Six. he's taken. Seven. Eight. And Diego pulls himself up by the ropes. He doesn't look like he has much left, Jim. No, he's... If he went down on that punch, I think he has very little left. That's the fourth knockdown of the fight. Morales with a right hand to the ribcage. It's like playing with a cobra. You can be in control, but one, all he takes is one or two good shots. Right hand, another knockdown, fifth knockdown of the fight, Three, fifth knockdown of Corrales' four, career. Five, another mark of what a performance it's been. Ray Woods is up on the apron. That's going to be the end of the fight. And Corrales goes over and nearly accosts his dad. 
having stopped the fight. Morales to come back. One thirty. Richard Steele is holding Tito Morales to try to keep him away from his own corner man because Diego is so upset that his trainer and father, Ray Woods, elected to stop the fight. He can come back at 140 with all his strength and be a better fighter. And it takes a father to know that. Don't lose it all this time. For what? You've done your best. This guy's too quick. Catch him 10 years from the day when he's slow, when his legs are slow. You see the volatility of the young man. And somewhat irrationally, he argues. And look at Floyd Jr. as the peacemaker for once. Well, it's a sport. Floyd Sr. had it right, but he jumped up after the first round and said you'll get him in the ninth or tenth. Yeah, he sure did, didn't he? Floyd Sr. called it perfectly. Cash is green. Mayweather's cut man yelling at Corrales, that's your daddy. These guys faced extraordinary pressures coming into this fight. And for the way Floyd Jr. handled everything that surrounded him in the past several months and handled himself in there tonight, he deserves nothing but the highest compliment. We know you the ring, just as Harold Letterman would always say, ring generalship. I've never seen it like that in a young fighter with so few fights. Never seen it. Extremely disappointed, Diego Corrales, and there's the scene. There have been so many differences between the two of them. When, uh, but there's the love. Cassius Clay, who became Muhammad Ali, outpointed Sonny Liston in the same fashion with so few professional fights. People said, can't be. A young man with courage can do a lot of things. That is Floyd Mayweather Sr. on the right. Floyd Mayweather Jr. on the left. There are differences extremely well publicized. Less credit is paid to the truth of this. Well, let's go back and take a little bit more of a look at what happened in the 10th round. There's the little left hook that put Corrales down for the first of the two knockdowns in the 10th. Then right hand landed flush on the cheek. Corrales again unable to keep his feet. It was at this moment that Corrales' father and trainer Ray Woods stepped up on the apron. You see Diego trying to tell his trainer father Ray Woods not to be on the apron and then reacting angrily as Ray Woods makes it clear that he wants the fight stopped at that moment. It takes a father to have that kind of courage to get up there and do that. You can lose your job, he gets up, but he's hurt. You can lose your job, but you can't lose your fathership. I say father, if you want to get totally technical about it, Ray Woods is his stepfather, but Diego says, that's my dad, that's the dad I've known. And so, in reality, yeah, that's their no relationship. There's no such thing as a stepfather when in you In reality, love they're father and they're son. They're father and son, he loves it. We all need a dad like that. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars on a brilliant performance. Ladies and Floyd. gentlemen, referee Richard Steele calls a halt to the bout. The official time, two minutes and 19 seconds of round number 10. The winner and still the reigning undefeated WBC super featherweight champion of the world, pretty boy Floyd Mayweather. Final copy box numbers, this may be, maybe the biggest copy box landslide we've covered, certainly in a, a hotly anticipated championship fight. Total punches landed, Mayweather landing 160 more, throwing 209 more, and landing at a connect percentage more than half of his punches. Jabs. Well, Diego Corrales only threw 47 of them and landed seven, and if there was a deficiency in his fight plan, there it is. George Foreman pointing out over and over that as the taller man and the bigger puncher, it was incumbent on Corrales to try to set up his power stuff with his jab, and he just didn't do it. Let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring with Floyd Mayweather Jr. All right, thank you, Jim. Congratulations on a great fight, Floyd. What didn't you do that you wanted to do in this fight? Um, 
well, uh, first of all, I want to thank God for this victory. And uh, like I said before, I just listened to my corner, listen to my, you know, my trainer, Roger Mayweather. My dad, he also had a lot of input on it. Of course, he was my trainer also. What part of you was your father and what part of you was Roger in there tonight? I probably using defense like my dad and using my jab like my Uncle Roger. But you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just a good feeling to be where I'm at today. Did he give you any problems at all? Uh, Diego Corrales, he's a, he's a great fighter. And I think he, he can be champion if he move up. He, and he, he got a lot of um, potential. But, you know, tonight just was, was my night to shine. I told people, you know what I'm saying, Floyd and Mayweather's ranked number one pound for pound. What did all of the bad blood between the two of you have to do in this fight? Uh, just to show the world who's the best 130 pounder in the world. He said he's the best, I say I'm the best. And so the best it thing It got pretty personal, though. You know, it got a little personal, but, you know what I'm saying, this is a business. I'm here to sell myself. This is Pretty Boy Floyd. I want to show the world that I'm the best out there, pound pound. I'm the best 130 pounder. So, you know, he said he's the best, I say I'm the best. So we come together and see who's the best. Was he clearly vulnerable to your left hook? Is that what you saw that you could get him with? He's not. It, it was just. It was just my night. You know what I'm I took my time. Well, most nights are your night. <laughs> but but why in, in particular in this fight was your left hook so effective as we saw there? Because I mean, this is I've been working on it in camp and training. I'm working on this shot. I'm knocking everybody out in camp with the same shot. So do you feel as you get older or that you're getting bolder? You know, I told you before, I can punch. I'm a big puncher, but, you know, I like to just take my time. If the knockout comes, it comes, but I like to, to win the best way I know how, and that's the lesson. Are you determined to stay at 130 where there are other high-profile fighters, or do you want to move up and wait to challenge some of the 135-pounders? Well, you know, I, want, I, would like, I would like to fight Prince Nassim. Hopefully, we can meet at 128, or he can come up to 130. We can fight, or I can fight him. Um, the winner of um, Prince, Mayor. Prince Nassim isn't going to fight you. Where, where everybody want to see After that fight. he saw this, you know, really it ain't going to happen. You know, I really want to fight Prince Nassim, <laughs> but I know you don't, don't want to fight. But hopefully I can fight the winner of Castamayo and free test. What did you talk to about with with uh, Diego after the, and the father after the fight? I told Diego, you know what I'm saying, let, 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 the, let the trash talk and all that garbage we went through. When we leave that in the past, I respect you as a fighter. Hopefully, you, you respect me. And let's go on with our careers. Do you think his father did the right thing by stopping it when he did? I think so. Because um, it, this is a deadly sport. This is boxing. This is a brutal sport. And um, he wanted to be around to fight again, so his father done the right thing. Thank you very much, Floyd, again. Congratulations. Hey, Jim? All right. Thank you, Larry. And one final look at the touching scene. As the Mayweathers of Grand Rapids, Michigan, now of Las Vegas, demonstrate that their reconciliation is complete. Well, George Foreman, uh, Harold Letterman compared <laughs> Floyd Mayweather Jr. to Willie Pep, and uh, other boxing critics, some writers, have compared him to Ray Leonard, Brunel Whitaker. You mentioned Muhammad Ali's performance against uh, Sonny Liston yeah, in Miami Beach. Everybody thought it had to be a robbery. It had to be a, a fake. But he outboxed him because he was brave and he was quick. He moved feet and head, not just head. But it's Larry Merchant who can really judge because this guy's seen more world title matches than, I guess, the two of us uh, together. Let us, when he comes in, ask him the same. How can you compare him with the best ones? Floyd Jr. talks about pound for pound. The pound for pound race centers around Shane Mosley, Felix Trinidad, Roy Jones. Is Floyd on that level now? Well, there's a guy by the name of Page in the boxing ring. Until they beat him in that 147 class, nobody's pound for pound until they fight Page. All right. James Page. George that throws that into the mix as well. Let's go back up to Larry in the ring with Diego Corrales. Again, thank you, Jim. Chico, just not your night. Tell us about it. Uh, I mean, before he came out, he fought a good fight. You know, he hands down, he, he did what he was supposed to do. He boxed very intelligently. Uh, you know, you got, you got to take Was he out. just, just too quick for you? Uh, I, I, I don't know if he's too quick. I mean, he just, you know, he fought a, a smart fight. The guy did what he was supposed to do. He, uh, he caught me coming in. He waited for me to get off and then, uh, waited to, to let his combinations go. And that was a, a smart fight. Was there anything you did that you thought might present an opening? Any time you, you felt that something happened at the end of your punches? No, nah, you know, I just kept, uh, all I knew was uh, keep on trucking, don't get frustrated, keep going, keep coming forward. Uh, that's what I did, you know. Never thought about it. Uh, you, you were extremely angry at your father for stopping the fight yeah. at that moment. Yeah. He's thinking not only of tonight, but of the rest of your career. How do you feel now with a few minutes under your belt? Uh, I'm still angry. Um, I feel like uh, 
boxing, but champion that deserves to, to finish out a fight on his feet or, or on his back. And, you know, I, that's the way I want to go out. I don't feel anybody has the right to stop the fight. And as long as I'm getting up, as long as I am still sitting... Tell us what you're seeing here at the end uh, of the fight. I got hit with a, a clean shot. Uh, you see, uh, you see, I'm still coherent. I mean, I look at him and, and I, you know, I let him know I'm okay. I tell, I mean, I'm all, all the way coherent. I just, uh... Was it a point of pride for you to finish the fight? You know, uh, I just, I just I'm, I, I'm better than being stopped. You know, I work damn hard, um, all the way around. There's no way I, 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 should, I should be stopped. I get up. I was the first time I ever been down. I got back up. I kept getting back up. I was clear every time I got back to my feet. Um, nobody had the right to stop the fight. Nobody. I don't care, you know, what the concern is. I am on my feet. I'm up every time. I kept getting back to my feet. I should not have been stopped. I don't know why they stopped this fight. You know, let me go do what I do. There were two more rounds after this fight. Um, I can make it through two more rounds. You're plainly devastated by what happened tonight. Yeah. Uh, Will you come back from this? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I, I never uh, planned after a loss. So, I guess just take time and go back to the drawing board and see what happens. Because I, like I said, I never planned for a loss. If you move up to 135, 140, you're not going to find quick guys. You're going to find guys on your speed level. Will you do better in those weight divisions, do you think? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. You know, I think the first loss is hard to rebound from, and uh, these a lot of fighters have a hard time rebounding from the first loss. If I if I decide to come on back, we'll see how well I rebound. Thank you very much, Diego.